Genesis chapter 3 and I'm going to begin reading at verse 9 but my thoughts are concentrated on verse 15. Oh, yes, yes, yes. As you're finding that we are having celebration for the retirement of Sister Ernestine Ford. Amen. And uh, the, the emotion is sort of mixed, isn't it? Uh, I have known her since 1979. The first time I came out here to preach for the Honorable Bishop uh, R.W. McMurray. Amen. And he would call her Cadillac. Ah, Cadillac. Uh, and so uh, she has been with us a long, 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 long time. She doesn't look it, but she's been with us a long time. Uh, and so her retirement time has come. We're having a celebration. What's that date again? Mm -hmm. December 8th. Oh, December 8th. And we're asked, we have a table outside, and all who would like to come and contribute, there's a $50 uh, ticket to come to the celebration. And uh, I'm going to cry. Yeah. Oh, thank God. This is for all right so god bless you and we're looking for you to come and join and in genesis chapter 3 beginning at the verse 9 and the lord called unto adam and said unto him where art thou and he said i heard thy voice in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked and i hid myself and he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field, and upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. I notice uh, proximity between the heel and the head. It is the head of the serpent, and it is the heel of the woman's seed. And the conceptualization of this message was born in a conversation with a young pastor from Indianapolis who was somewhere in this city. And as we were talking, he asked me, were there two seeds? And, and I thought initially that he was talking about the woman, or from the human point of view, were there two seeds? And I said, categorically, no, particularly when he brought up Adam and Eve, and then he brought up Cain and Abel. And I said, no, there's only one seed of the woman. But then I found that he was talking about the seed on the negative side, the serpent, and then the seed on the human side. And I discovered, again, that in order to have any kind of critical discussion, you have to define where you are. Because you cannot have a discussion that comes to any fruition 
if the individuals don't know what they're saying when they use certain expressions. It's one of the problems we have with the opposite sex is that what they mean when they say something, we can't figure out their definition. So we're talking to somebody and none of us know what the terms are. So we actually can't come to any decent conclusion when you're arguing with terms with different meanings than the terms I'm using. And I discovered then that there is a message in here. And the message simply is, I have to be bruised in order to have victory. I just want you to look at somebody and tell them I'm bruised, but I'm victorious. Amen, amen. I'm bruised but I'm coming out on top. <laughs> the development of self-esteem, I think, is significant for the human journey. And uh, in Genesis, of course, the beginnings of the operation of God in revelation to human beings actually starts with a great movement towards self-esteem, high self-esteem. And I think that it's grounded then in two ways. First of all, it's grounded spiritually because I do believe that when a man meets God, he actually meets himself. I believe for the first time, when you meet God, you meet yourself. You meet yourself in a more pristine, in a purer sense than having to deal with people who form you based upon their own concepts of the human existence. Because many times we are formed or put together by people in our circles who aren't very healthy about life themselves. And so consequently, we become the product of the negativities of other people's disposition and attitudes. Because you can't project what isn't in you. And since none of us have been formed in a vacuum, we actually become the product of the way other people think and what other people say about us. How often have I heard other people's opinions about people who are now sick and disgusted because they have allowed people significance in their life to the point where what they say becomes the Bible. And so consequently, when you meet God, you meet a whole new view of who and what you can be. Yeah. It didn't begin in the latter part of the Bible. It actually began in Genesis. Because any time God can put together a creation and then turn around and tell a man that here's what I need you to do. I need you to be fruitful. I need you to multiply. I need you to replenish and subdue the earth. In other words, I respect your creativity, your cognitive ability, your intellectuality enough to give you the responsibility of handling my world. Uh, can you understand the self-esteem build that comes from someone respecting you enough to believe that you can handle what they just created. I just made you and I just made the world. I put animals all over the place and I've allowed you the privilege to name them. And if you name them, him a monkey, I won't call him a rhinoceros. If you name him a donkey, I won't override and call him an eagle. Uh, whatever you name him, and when you have naming rights, it's a sign of power. Because anytime God says that you have the right and power to name the animals, and I will allow you, because I respect your creativity, I respect your intellectuality, 
I respect your mind because after all, I'm the one who created you to receive revelation of who I am. Now, if that doesn't build self-esteem, I don't know what else can. Because self-esteem is grounded in one's ability to have success. And if there is no success in one's life, then it's going to be difficult for them to feel good about who they are and what they can do or achieve. Uh, it is a true thing from psychological development when you're raising a child, you should always give the child something they can handle. Because the little successes help to build them to take on bigger challenges because it's in challenge that you find out who you are. Just a minute ago, uh, Joe Paul was saying to me that there are many things that are applicable to the inner spirit of the human being. But the only way you get a good glimpse at what's inside of you is how you handle the challenges that are before you. Oh, I feel it here. I'm, I'm catching up, you know. <clears throat> uh, I've been off, so, you know, I'm a little rusty, but the Lord will help me. <clears throat> uh, I'll be there after a while. And so, it's important to grasp then the relationship between God and man in the garden. Because what he does is he creates and then he says that you are now going to be responsible for what I have put together. Uh, this reminds me, I think I told it earlier, of the time when uh, I was with my mother and father in Syracuse, New York, and my mother would take the car from Syracuse all the way down to uh, New York City. And when she would get to Yonkers or somewhere up near Suffren uh, on 17, she would uh, then pull the car over. My dad had this Electra 225 Buick, you know, uh, for those of us who are great enough to know what it is, uh, we called it then a deuce and a quarter. Oh, yes, this, and the lights went all the way across the back, this monstrous car. And my mother would pull over and say, Noel, I want you to drive now because uh, it becomes difficult for me to handle the traffic in New York. And I'm telling you, I could feel my head swelling like a helium balloon simply because your mother thought enough of you to take her life and put in your hands at 17 because of something she couldn't handle. Now, can you imagine the kind of self-esteem boost that was, you know, my mama gave me the car down in New York and uh, allowed me the privilege of driving. And it was something that was significant to me at 17. Can you imagine the boost when you were put in a place of responsibility, even though the place of responsibility is a place of challenge? It is also the place that builds your confidence and causes you to feel good about yourself. Anytime you're raised with you ain't able, you don't have the ability, you can't do it, you can't handle it, you're going to end up being broken instead of being strong. And that's what God said. I'm going to give you a challenge and the challenge is responsibility. But I never give responsibility where the person has the inability to handle it. That's why he says, I'll put no more on you than you're able to bear. I want to suggest to you who are feeling down on yourself today that if you're in here at all and you're clothed and in your right mind, you had to overcome something. <laughs> oh, I feel like having church. I don't warm up. I don't care how baggy your eyes look. I don't care how much crying you did last night. If you could get up amidst all that you've been through and didn't put your right shoe on your left foot and got your hair on right, got your clothes looking good. If you can do that, you overcame something. 
Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Let everybody in the world be down on you as long as you're not down on yourself. Oh, I'm going to have church here today. I feel it coming. Uh, not only was that significant, but then he said also, as God, as Elohim, he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So what he's suggesting immediately now is not only have I created you to bear the responsibility of my creation, not only have I made you genius to handle the space that you're in, I also made you a reflection of who I am. And I am God. I am Elohim and I have made you a reflection of who I am. Significantly what he's saying then is whatever he gives me charge over, I am a reflection of him in that space. Uh, which makes me a god of the space that God has assigned me to. I can't use the word sub-God, uh, but I can use the word mini-God because actually the respect that you will ever have in your space is because of the anointing and the authority that God has given you for your space. And since you made, you're made in his reflection and in his likeness, then he sees the image of him in the space that he has given you authority and what he does is he allows you the free will to operate so he backs off and lets you let you rather operate as he would operate in that space so the question is why are you hiding when I have not sent you into the space to hide I sent you into the space to dominate and be in charge I want to talk to somebody in here who's gifted and I'm asking the question why are you hiding when God has sent you to be in charge why have you allowed somebody else to take over how you feel about yourself how you feel about your space and why are you in the back seat of your life when you ought to be driving oh, i want to talk to somebody here i've made you in my likeness and of course uh, and after my image and uh, I saw a commercial the other day where image is everything where what God is saying is in my space uh, you, the respect that you get is respect that I get because you are a reflection of my respectability and since I have sent you into the space I want you to operate as I would in that space and so now then, if you need any help to operate in your space, you get the help from the one who put you in that space. But I don't need you to call me every minute because I already assessed your ability and I have already given you the talent to handle the space that you're in. So I don't need you calling me every minute to bring you out, even though I will if you get in trouble. But I need you to walk up in that space, consult me before, so you can prevent the breakdown in all thy ways. Acknowledge me and I will direct your path. Because I'm not a God of failure, I'm a God of victory, and I'm a God of success. Oh, I feel something happening. And then, of course, he moves into Jehovah Elohim. And when he moves into the Jehovah Elohim now, he becomes the Lord God. And he's now going to be covenant-oriented. And it's an interesting thing what he says. He says, it is not good that man should be alone. I, I will make him and help meet 
for him. Now notice now he moves into Jehovah Elohim when he puts together a helpmeet for the man. Uh, Jehovah now the Lord. It's not just Elohim God because he can be your God and still not be your Lord because he does not have a relationship with you and any time you establish a relationship with him you just don't see him as God you see him as Lord so he's Lord God the Lord aspect is I am your Lord because I'm going to give you a sense of principles, a set of principles of maxims and a set of tenets and if you follow these things I am always with you. You see the secret here is not what's going on spiritually I've learned this the last quarter of this year or to this point that it's not what's going on spiritually what we receive by faith it, it's what we can connect to intellectually uh, to bring what is in our spirit by faith into our minds so that we might operate of course you know that you're born again and you are a child of God and that you were saved spiritually but until you can apprehend it intellectually and take it out of your spirit in your mind you will be a crippled born again you will be a sad born again you would be a failing born again you see that's why Paul prayed this prayer I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know some stuff because something happens deeply in your spirit and unless your spirit talks to your mind you can't translate it into your life I feel the cold. You see, it's, it's an important piece here because it is in your spirit, but if you don't think it, you can't make it a part of your life. Uh, being saved is not just coming and worshiping and clapping and preaching and singing and spending time in church. Being saved is having power in the streets and power in your life. God, I feel your strength. Uh, you know, there's someone saying, well, what are you doing on Sunday? I was serving God on Sunday. No, you weren't. You were worshiping on Sunday. Uh, I tell you, when you serve God, you serve him on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's when you serve him. When you serve what it is, he served you when you sat and received his word. And when you moved in the power of what he said because you found out who you are. I'm not what mama them said I am. I'm what God said. Oh, feel it here and he said I will supply your needs I, I'm your Jehovah I'm uh, the self-existent one I'm the Jehovah Jireh I'm the Jehovah Shalom uh, I'm Jehovah Rofika Jehovah Roa Jehovah Makadish uh, I am I am, I am, I am because you have to have respectability to represent me and you have to control your space to represent me. So I don't only create you, but I sustain you. I'm there because I am the source. And, and so he creates and this is what builds self-esteem. So then he says on a social side, I want to build your self-esteem so what I did was I am above you of course and there are times when I'm not visiting you and you're going to feel alone you're going to feel alone because I am above you and I deal with you spiritually and the animals are below you and so I need to put somebody on your level and so he became more to man now because he's going to add to the man someone who is on his level so so he creates creatures who become significant now to fulfill the I am 
<laughs> uh, let me put that another way. Uh, I'm having an epiphany. <laughs> you see, before sin, God preceded whatever it is we needed. <laughs> and what he did was he gave us what we needed before we asked. <laughs> uh, after sin, we have to go through certain experiences that are debilitated in order to call him to move on our behalf. Uh, in other words, before the woman got here, the man, everything was here before the woman got here. And when the woman got here, she was simply a supplement. Uh, she was not below the man. She was not above the man. She was beside the man. So God created her and Ezer, which is a helper and the etymological root is crown. So when God made the woman, he, he didn't make a frown, he made a crown. Uh, and, and crowns only sit on the heads of kings. Uh, I wish somebody would get me here uh, so I can preach. I'm going to preach a while. Uh, in other words, you ain't nothing but a crown. Uh, to sit on the head of a king. Uh, but a crown is something that everybody can't wear. Uh, only kings wear crowns. Uh, and don't frown because you're a crown. Uh, be a crown to build whoever is in your space. Uh, I wish somebody would get it here. The problem with life is broken relationships. Uh, because if you're broken with God, then you're broken with yourself. And when you're broken with yourself, you can't connect to anybody else. Because broken people cannot have healthy relationships. you got to get yourself together with God before you can have a healthy relationship with anybody who is with God. I'm going to preach anyway. <laughs> and so he creates the creatures and, and, and the crown. And, and really it's the status or designation of importance uh, a support that is status giving and you, you, you gotta get it right now it's a support that is status giving it is not a reduction to have somebody in your space who is on your level uh, somebody who you can bounce it off with you see God God is coming in the cool of the day and he's teaching. Uh, the animals don't have but instinct. They don't have any creative, uh, intellectual capacity, any ability to communicate other than whatever they do. If you're a donkey, it's a bray. If you're a bird, it's a chirp. Uh, and so their skills of worship and praise are really just praise. Because whatever they do, that's what they do. But God created you with the ability to create worship, create praise, create songs. And so he's created you with the ability to communicate with somebody who is on your level. And that takes away being alone. So I suggest to you very carefully that if you with somebody but they're not on your level, you still alone. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because either you're talking over their heads or you're talking under their feet or you're talking around them but you still alone. Uh, well, you got somebody with you. Yeah, I just got a body with me. But I don't have any intellect with me. I don't have any spirituality with me. We're not on the same level. So, so now you ask yourself, why are you yelling at somebody who's right in front of you? You're yelling and spitting, just hollering and spitting. They, 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 they just three, three feet away. You generally yell at somebody who's way across the building. But now you're yelling at somebody who's right in front of your face. And you wonder why you're shouting. I'll tell you why you're shouting. Because even though they're close physically, they're far away intellectually. They're far away emotionally. And sometimes you got to call them on the phone while they're looking right at you three inches away. Because you ain't close. 
Ah, I better I can preach this a little bit. Have I told you touch your neighbor yet? Uh, give me a few minutes. <laughs> and so this crown then makes you a king, a queen on all levels. <laughs> One writer said this word designates assistance, <laughs> but it is more frequently used in a concrete sense <laughs> to designate the assistant not just assistance because you can get assistance from anybody but you can't have an assistant and it be anybody somebody can give you assistance and not be in the position but what God said now is I'm putting you in the position to crown the king I wish you'd understand it. I'm putting you in the position to crown the queen because I've given you a queen that makes you a king. Okay, now can, can I get it right? Can I get it right? Am I got it right? I'm giving you a crown and that crown makes you a king but you can't have a king unless you have a queen and so it's reciprocity it's not that you were made simply to dominate me notice what he said he said your desire shall be to your husband after they sinned it was a curse for the man to be over the woman the man and the woman on the same level tell Satan that no matter what you throw at us if we're not divided then we certainly will not be defeated I want to talk to somebody in this house I feel like having church give somebody a high five and say I can't be defeated if I'm not divided oh God because only a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways whenever you stabilize who you are the victory is going to be yours you might be bruised but you will have I feel I'm almost there and so now then sin ruins relationships and sin ruins self esteem because somehow now it catapults you in to a position where you are ashamed of yourself why are you hiding I've given you all the gifts and talents that any person can have I've endowed you with intellectuality creativity and I've set you up to be a representative of me why are you hiding in the space that I have designated for you and you've allowed people to talk you into feeling like you don't have the ability or the capacity to become anything why are you hiding under somebody else's shadow and pocketbook why are you hiding under somebody else's ideas and under somebody else's creativity why are you name calling when I gave you a name to be called I want to talk to somebody here why 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 are you hiding when the world needs you when your space is calling for you you remind me of Noah drunk on the day of reconstruction it's now Noah you got a new world it's time to make it happen and you laying up here drunk get up and shake yourself you got too much life left in you to be laying around wondering what you're going to become when God said I already gave you the rights to where you are and I've sent you an assistant to crown you king of your space so since you're a king act like it since you're a queen act like it take it out of the spirit of your faith and put it into the cognition of your mind because as a man sinketh in his heart so is he get up and take it back I'm talking to somebody here who has been waiting a long time get up and take it back ain't nobody gonna give it to you you got to take it back the devil is not going to release it unless you show him who you are yes, 
some pushing me here. And so now the basic to our nature is to require relationships to nurture self-esteem. And that's why we feel good about certain spaces and feel good about certain people. Because they don't tear us down, they build us up. And that's what God has ordained you to do, to build people up. That's why he talks about even building his body. He uses people to build his body. And a lot of stuff you've been through just qualified you to be a builder and not a destroyer. It's what you've been through that's got some of the edges off you. So that the next time you step, you step into victory. Oh, I feel something happening. Oh, I feel it and so the evaluation now becomes necessary because it necessitates a judgment a relationship rooted in the evaluation is significant to individuals so what God does now is he looks back at what he did and he saw everything that he made and behold it was very good so now after he made you and formed you he says now this is good uh, but now sin comes and by this we know love that he laid down his life for us and this in turn restores the self-esteem because even though I faltered he has built into the faltering a plan of intervention so what was not prevented he now intervenes and his intervention is to restore you to the original thinking that you should have had if you didn't fall I want to talk to somebody in here because you made a mistake does not disqualify you because you went to prison because you had an abortion because you had a divorce because you had children when you shouldn't because you ended up in the wrong bed because you got drunk because you went crazy it does not disqualify you because you still are who he made you and now he's gonna intervene on your breakdown and when he puts you back together you'll be better than you were before you broke down get up and shake yourself and tell him I'm bruised but I will have victory I feel like preaching in here and so now as edifiers he, he says something to us that we must be careful of let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but rather that which is good for the use of edifying that it may minister grace to the hearers oh you forgot you didn't know did you that God called you with all of your experiences to edify the person beside you oh, can you touch somebody for the second time and say I'm designed to bless oh, I'm designed everything about me is designed to be a blessing to you I'm not just an assistant I am an assistant and God put me in your life to crown you I feel like preaching here oh, I feel it so eventually now it becomes partially internalized because now you've got to internalize it so you can lead to self judgment because we have too many weaklings judging us we now have to move to self judgment in other words you have to look at what God has ordained you to do and after after you get it done with all the pain you still look at it and say it is good I feel it here because you'll never feel good about yourself if you don't know you were victorious you'll never feel good about yourself if you can't tell yourself weeping may endure for a night but my joy has gotten here my weeping was last night my joy is here right now you've got to judge yourself I feel 
feel it here. And then what God does is he wipes out the other judgments. When he tells you, you can't judge another man's servant. I working for you. You ain't working for them. You working for God. So you can't sit around and abort your mission over what somebody else has to say. Because anytime God is moving you, the demons are coming out. Let me tell you something. Can, can I talk to you for a minute? Somebody's getting ready to talk about you. Somebody's getting ready to low rate you. Somebody's getting ready to put you down. Somebody's getting ready to say you ain't gonna make it. That you ain't no good. You know why? Because you're about to crush their head. And all they can do is crush I feel something going on here and that's why he continues to value us because your love is conditional but his is unconditional and he didn't make and create you to fail he created and made you to represent him and I am God so why are you hiding why have you gone in this reclusive state when you used to be vivacious when you used to take life on and the reason is you didn't intend to be bruised but the bruising is in same proportion to the crushing I feel it here they haven't got to your head they only at your feet I could preach here because anybody trying to pull you down is already below you uh, can you get it can you get it you ought to rejoice every time they open their mouth you ought to give God praise every time they oppose you ought to lift up holy hands and give worship to the God who made you in his image and let the world know I'm coming out I'm coming out of hiding can I preach just for a few more minutes then I'm gonna get happy and to cut off the source of positive self-esteem is what Adam did when he went into hiding he no longer felt he was capable of being in the presence of a visiting God so now he goes into hiding now when you go into hiding Adam you have cut off the source of your strength you have now ignored where your power comes from it is not especially when you need him now you see God has to come seek us out to restore us to the place we should be because we have forgotten that he really does love us and we don't have to wait till he comes out even in your broken state you can go to him and say Lord I have left my mission and I've been hiding too long you have allowed folk to talk you out of the wonder of who you are and you made them feel like you have to be like them but God help us if everybody's got to be like one somebody we're gonna cheat everybody of who you are he sent you idiosyncratically uniquely distinctly different from everybody else so that he could be the God in you that he can't be in anybody else so why are you hiding when you need to be coming up boldly and say here I am like we were little children playing hide and seek and after we finished counting to a hundred we would say it like this we would say ready or not here I come I wish you'd touch three people real quick and tell them ready or not here I come if you're a hater you ain't ready haters are or not I feel like lifting him up 
I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Ready or not, here I come. Coming in the name of the Lord. Coming with my gifts and my creativity. Coming with my ability to handle responsibility. Ready or not, you might not be able to take it, but I'm coming anyway. I'm coming with the assignment. I'm not hiding anymore. Give somebody a high five and say, I'm not passing the book. This is my responsibility. I'm not having any ego defenses. I'm not having any poor attempt to face consequences. I'm reserving positive self-regard. I'm not blaming my mama. I'm not blaming my papa. I'm not blaming folk around me. It's me that needs to shake myself and rise up and tell the world I've got something for the world. I've got something for this season. We might as well have church, Patrick. I'm sick of hiding my talent because certain people don't like it when you show what God has given you. I'm sick of hiding my intellectual my creativity because some people don't like what I'm doing and sometimes you gotta wait till your life is almost over for people to appreciate who you are because you're so far ahead of them that every time I look at you you slowing down for somebody to catch you who is a cripple themselves the devil is a liar if you can't operate on my pace, then you cannot be with me. I cannot say to you, oh magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. If we're not on the same level, I'm thinking 20 million. You're thinking 20 cents. We can't run together. I'm thinking the best I can be. You're thinking modify. The devil is a liar. Put on some glasses uh, if you can't stand the light uh, but I'm not dimming down uh, for you to feel like somebody uh, I'm not a follower uh, I've been sent to lead uh, I've been sent to dominate uh, I've been sent to replenish uh, I've been sent to subdue uh, and while I'm at it uh, I'm going to be bruised uh, but I'm on crush his head uh, cause I'm coming down on your devil uh, every time I praise him I'm crushing your head every time I thank him I'm crushing your head every time I lift him up I'm crushing your head every time I move I'm crushing your head the reason I'm gonna crush your head is you made me cry the reason I'm gonna crush your head is you embarrass me the reason I'm gonna crush your head is you're trying to kill me the reason I'm gonna crush your head and then you're trying to hurt me and I recited that the victory shall 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 give somebody a high five say I might be hurting but the victory is mine I might be talked about but the victory is mine they may push me out but when they push me out they pushing me in cause direction comes from rejection and I'm so glad so glad he crushed his head I'm so glad I got victory today I got power today give somebody a high five for the fifth time and say neighbor come out of there come from behind the bushes who you're hiding from who you're hiding hiding from who you're hiding from show who you are stand up and be counted as God's gift to somebody give somebody a high five for the second to the last time and say neighbor I'm special Close.
closing but everybody can't handle you shake somebody's hand for the last time and say neighbor God did not intend for everybody to handle you you're too much for most people give God the glory
There's somebody in this house. What the Lord is calling them. Calling you out. 